Okay, so the number of green hundreds and thousands that you found on your cookie was? Sorry, I didn't hear the first one. 89? Yep. Wow. 61. 27. 41. 41. 44. 45. 11. 57. 37. 41. 41. Was that two 41s? Yeah. Who said 41? You know? Okay. Next. Wow. Now, what we've got here is data. But that's what I call raw data. Okay? It's kind of telling me a story. I'm like, wow, seven? Do I believe you? <laughs> wow, 89? Really? You're coming to 89? Okay, then. Um, I grab this and I'm going to go one variable analysis because we've got one variable. The variable is the number of green hundreds and thousands on a mini cookie beer. Hundreds of thousands of biscuits. So, one variable. There we have a picture of our data. Now that's telling us a story that the raw data didn't. I can play with this data. So here... I'm seeing more and more detail in the data, and when I move it this way, I'm seeing, if you like, less and less detail. Can anyone explain what's happening there? What's this changing? So what is changing and what's staying the same? When I move this up, we're getting more classes. So actually the width of this histogram bar, if you like, because histograms are smack next to each other, that's getting smaller. As I have less classes, the width is getting bigger. So those no, the, the scale down here is not changing, but the number of sort of categories, if you like, is changing. So the picture of the data there is quite different to the picture in a way when I go this way here. So you sort of can see that draw, deciding the width changes what the data looks like. Okay? Now if I go options, I can show a second plot. That's another way of looking at the data. Now I want you to tell me what you already know about a plot like that. What does a box plot tell us? Does anyone actually know? Yeah, you can um, guess. Is it like main, the main ones like in the middle? Yeah. So this one here, that's the littlest or the smallest, so that's, I'm going to call it the minimum, is on this line here because that was the minimum here. This one here, that's our max. Okay. Any guesses what this one would be? Median, well spotted. It is the median, not the mean, it's the median, it's the very middle one. So the middle one had 20 something. Now, the thing is with box plot, from here to here, and here to here, and here to here, and here to here, all actually have 25% of the data. So that means this we call the lower quartile because 25 percent is one quarter 25 over 100 25 percent so that's the lower quartile median upper quartile okay so if we went back to our actual data 
So here's our actual data. In Excel, I can actually sort that very easily. So I go data, and I go sort. Smallest to largest. So now I can see I have 26. So that's my 89 is my what? Maximum. My maximum, yeah. And this one here is my minimum. minimum. Fantastic. So if I've got 26 pieces of data, number 13 and number 14 are going to be in the middle, aren't they? So what do you think that my median is? 26. 26, brilliant. So now if I've got 13, if I look at this half of the data here, what would be the median of that? I've got 13 pieces, so I want six either side, so that one there. Okay, so this one here, what are we calling up? Lower quartile, fantastic. That's my lower quartile, that's my minimum. Now, 26 is the median, isn't it? So I'm just going to do a bit of a uh, insert there, just so that I can pop the 26 here. 26 is the median. I had two middle, so I got the middle of them. And how did I get the middle of them? You can add the two together and divide by... Yeah. There we go. Maybe see better now. Okay. Hey? Um, so then we've got our median is 26, then we need to look at this other half, and I need to get the median of that to find the upper quartile, fantastic. So how many pieces of data are there? One, two, three, oh, hang on. Yeah, 12, is it? Hang on. One, two, let's count them. 13, so which one would it be? Seven. Number seven, so this one here, and I'll just get rid of those numbers again, there we go. So number 41 is our upper quartile, and that one is our max. Okay, so just pause that for a minute. I want you all to draw me a box and whisker plot with those values. Now, I'll show you how you can start, firstly you've got to choose a scale, so you're going to have to have 7 and 89 on your x axis. So I suggest you just get a scale of like 0 to 100 on your x axis. And the other thing what we can do is actually do a dot plot at the same time, which would be kind of cool. Okay, so I'm going to draw one with you. <coughs> I'll just go get rid of all of that. So step one, and I'm going to do it freehand just so that you kind of get the drawing from scratch. You would be doing it a bit more sensibly with the ruler. So I decide I'm going to have a hundred there. You can count out squares. I'm just guessing. So I've got 50, 100, and then I need to make sure this is evenly uh, 10, 20, 30, 40. 60, 70, 80, 90. You don't actually have a scale here. Now, to make this a better learning experience, I'm going to put a dot plot as well. So for the dots, I've got 7, 11, 11, 13. So back to here. It was 7, 11, 11, 13. You'll be better to scale than me. Um, 18, 20, 20, 21. Okay, so 18, 20, 20, 21. Okay, then I've got 22, 22, 23, 24. 22, 
22, 23, 24. I've not drawn it well, but you're getting the idea, I hope. Well, that's 24. 25. So this would be a fail, because that's clearly not 25. That's more like 28. But you get the idea that you do the dots along. Um, now let's just look at our box and whisker. Okay, so we've got a minimum of seven. So we're going to put the seven here. All right. And then we've got a lower quartile of 20. So I'm going to put my line there. I've got a median of 26. So 26 is about there. And upper quartile 41. So 41 is about there. And the maximum was 89, which is there. Then you draw that like that, the line there and the line there. Okay? Make sense? So I'll give you the um, values so that you can do it properly. Okay, so there you have it in a form that you can actually see all the data points. So I've just copied and pasted them up there. So the ones that you need to actually put on your plot, um, that 20 is there. That's actually the lower quartile. Okay? So those are all your dots. Alrighty. So what we're looking at here now is a dot plot. So you can see what your dot plot should look like. Okay? And you can compare your dot plot and box and whisker with this dot plot and box and whisker. And here we have N, 26. That means the number of cookies was 26. So I'm presuming there's 26 students in this class. The mean. The mean is when you add them all together and divide by how many there are. So I want you to actually do that and see if you get 32.0385. Standard deviation, 18. That's a measure of spread that we don't do in year 9. Minimum is 7. Quartile 120, median 26, quartile 341, and max 89. Is that what we got? Yeah. It is? Yeah, so this is our double check that we got it right. Okay? So just mark your own box plot and dot plot. So now your job is to move to the analysis part and write sentences about your dot plot and box plot.